Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Blake here from ChessPathways.com, and in today's openings video, we're going to be talking about the sodium attack. Definitely not an opening I think about every day, but I got the request from one of our Chess Pathways members to do it. Which, by the way, if you're not a member yet, please sign up on ChessPathways.com, totally free. But the sodium attack begins with this move, knight to a3 by white on move 1. Now, if you're familiar with the chess opening principles at all, it should be pretty obvious that this move is suboptimal. There's definitely no need to commit a knight to the rim of the board on move 1. It's called the sodium attack because of the na there and its notation there, na3. Uh, of course, na is the uh, elemental symbol of sodium. It's also sometimes called the Durkin opening, named after the player who invented it. Let's see how the game could go here. Let's say black plays here e5. Sometimes white even plays knight c4 on move 2, just immediately attacking this e5 pawn. Definitely a violation of opening principles, moving the same piece twice when that knight could have found a perfectly good square in one move. Uh, here, if black plays knight c6 to defend this pawn, white could play e4. And white could be thinking about playing knight f3 next, trying to pile up on this e5 pawn, and just trying to stabilize the center for now. And white could play this way, but black has several promising options here. First of all, black could just play d5 and blow the center open. Kind of pointing out that this knight is kind of stupid here on c4. Black can just take back with the queen, and there's not going to be any knight c3 to harass that queen like there often is because this knight is somehow on c4. <laughs> Another option for black is the Durkin Gambit, which begins with pawn to f5 here. Now, I could not find any master level games that feature the Durkin Gambit. In fact, I'd never heard of it before until I prepped for this video. But this seems like a promising way to, uh, to fight against this sodium attack. So the point is, after e takes f5, black is free to push forward with d5 and grab the center, but not right away. You don't want to allow queen h5 now, of course, because you can't block with g6. So knight f6 first. And white could play here knight f3. Anything else, black's just going to push d5, kick the knight away, get their pawn back, and black's, you know, almost winning, just positionally. So knight f3, black can push uh, push forward with e4. Knight e5, takes, takes, queen e7, knight g4, and now comes d5. Black has full control of the center, and this f5 pawn's probably going to fall. And if it falls, then black is just much better positionally. It's kind of funny how white has made six knight moves out of their first eight moves. So, I tried to look a little further, I don't know why, because no one's ever going to play this, but <laughs> I just wanted to establish a main line of the Durkin Gambit, and it looks like white should probably try to hold on to this pawn, because otherwise they're suffering for nothing. You know, if I was white here and a black had the full center, I'd at least want to try to hold on to my extra pawn. So, let's say knight takes f6, queen takes f6, queen h5 check, queen f7, takes, takes, g4, trying to defend the pawn, but now comes h5, a very common idea. Uh, known from openings like the Queen's Gambit and the King's Gambit, this kind of pattern. When someone tries to hold on to a pawn here on f5 or on c4 or on c5 like this, you can often use that to try to open up the rook's file and try to undermine that pawn chain, especially when the enemy rook's not defended. Uh, of course, white can't just play h3 because uh, there's a pin here on the h file. Nonetheless, white could temporarily defend this pawn. Let's say bishop e2, takes, takes, and okay, white's still up a pawn for the time being, but it's hard to imagine this pawn's going to survive long term. I'd still rather be black in this position. So that was one possible line of the sodium attack, if black plays e5, just immediately bringing this knight to c4. Um, another idea is if black plays d5 here on move 1, white could sometimes play c4 right away and, uh, and challenge the center, and if black takes, of course, white can take with the knight. I found it kind of funny when I was analyzing this, and uh, the computer was saying e5 was the best move, and that was so um, against all my pattern recognition, because I think, wow, when there's tension between the c and d pawns on move 2, black can't just let white take, because then white just takes, plays knight c3, and gets a good position. But then I remember, oh yeah, this knight's on, uh, it's on a3, so if white takes, this queen's actually pretty comfortable on d5. So black actually doesn't have to address this pawn tension at all, it's actually fine for black if white were to just take on d5 now, uh, for example, let's say c takes d5, queen takes d5, d3, f5, and I'm pretty sure white's best move here is just knight b1. This knight really needs to be on c3. And uh, of course, if white has to play knight b1 here as their best move, it's pretty clear their opening doesn't make too much sense. I'll just show one other idea white sometimes has when they play the sodium attack, and that is to drop this knight back to c2 instead of coming to c4. So, for example, let's say knight a3, e5, c3. Black can grab the full center with d5, knight c2, knight f6, let's say g3, bishop g2, black takes the full center, d3, knight f3, castles, and eventually e4. We almost get a position from the king's Indian attack, except instead of this knight being on d2, the knight's on c2. And it's not very clear why white would want this knight on c2 instead of d2. First of all, it takes two moves to get there instead of one. 
And secondly, the knight seems better on d2, because if black advances with d4, the c4 square could be a target. Um, it also helps reinforce this e-pawn. The e-pawn's not hanging, by the way. I know black has two attackers on it, but there's all these, uh, the typical discoveries, right, with the bishop. Kind of a very common uh, theme there in the King's Indian attack. So the e-pawn's not hanging, even though this knight is not on d2, but again, it's not clear why white would want this knight to be on c2. All right, thanks for watching. Please make sure you visit chesspathways.com and sign up. I'll send you a free move-by-move -move guide to chess thinking. Totally free to join, only takes five seconds. It took me way too long to become a chess master, and I want to help you do it in a fraction of the time. Thanks, and I will see you there.